all the dear children in thy tender care, and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Mooresville to this Children's Christmas Eve worship service. But we don't have any children here except for children of God, so I trust and pray your children at home and worshiping with us. We're going to explore a bit of the marvel and the wonder of Jesus' birth, of God coming among us in flesh and blood. This will be a wonderful service. You'll know some of the songs that we're going to sing from Away in a Manger, the Happy Birthday, and some of the other ones. We also give thanks for all the special people that helped contribute to the video gospel readings for tonight as well. So stay tuned to see them. Now, would you join me in prayer as we gather for worship in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God... Thank you for babies and for children, for youth and for adults, for parents and grandparents and great-grandparents. Thank you for shepherds and angels and wise men. Thank you for all the animals of your creation around us as well. Be with us, God, as we worship this night and as we prepare our hearts to celebrate Jesus' birthday. Come be in our hearts Come be on our lips, come be in our minds, and come be through our song. In the name of Jesus, we gather and pray. Amen. Thank you, Caroline, for playing piano for us tonight, and that's one of my favorite songs and one of my most favorite 
prayers in all of our songbook, that prayer that we just prayed, be near me, Lord Jesus. And now, since we're not able to be near one another in person, I give thanks for all the people who helped lead us in the gospel readings for tonight by video. You were near to one another, and as we watch these videos, you are near to our hearts and near to God's heart as well. The videos will remind us of, of Mary and Elizabeth, of Joseph, of shepherds and angels and wise men and gifts, and especially the gift of Jesus. Let us start with our first video, the first part of the gospel story. What was that? Mary jumped into Christ and tried to hide. She was expecting Joseph to visit her to talk about their wedding. It, but it wasn't Joseph. It was an angel named Gabriel who was sent with a message from God. Don't be afraid, Mary. I have good news for you. You will have a baby. His name will be Jesus. He will be your son, but he will also be God's son. How is this possible? The Holy Spirit makes all things possible. Your child will be called holy, the Messiah, the Savior of God's people. Mary was scared, but excited too. She took a deep breath and stood tall, stood up tall and said, Here I am, a servant of God. I will love and care for baby Jesus. Then Mary rushed to tell Joseph good, good news. Thank you very much to the Kleins. You remind us of all of the emotions at Christmas, the excitement, and there was fear. And then there was Mary who said the words about good news that she would love and care for this baby Jesus. It gives me joy both to see you on video as well as to hear that story again. It gives me joy as in this, as in this plaque that someone gave me a while back. It says, joy to the world. Joy to the world. And someone said the word joy stands for Jesus, others, and then you. In other words, we love Jesus, we love others, we love our neighbors, and we love ourselves, right? Jesus, others, and yourself. Joy to the world. And this, friends, is good news. I'm going to invite you to repeat something after me, though. That it's not just joy is good news, but Jesus is good news. Can you say that with me? Jesus is good news. This time I'm going to say Jesus is, and you say good news. Ready? Jesus is. Good news. Jesus is. Good news. Jesus is. Good news. With joy, now let us sing joy to the world. Let's go to the next. Joseph turned and tossed in his sleep. He was worried about Mary's news. Mary was going to have a baby? God's son? While Joseph slept, God sent Gabriel to bring him a message too. Don't be afraid, Joseph. God will be care, care for this baby. You will name him Jesus. He will be a descendant of King David. But he will also be a king for God's people. Joseph woke up. Amazed by his dream, Gabriel was gone, but he remembered the good news. Soon he and Mary would be married. I will love and care for God's only son, baby Jesus. Good evening, boys and girls. I'm Pastor Vern, and it's good to have you here this evening. 
You know, we heard in this last story about Joseph tossing and turning in his sleep. We all toss and turn in our sleep about things that we worry about, just like Joseph. Maybe that's concerns about getting sick. Maybe that's a wild dream or a nightmare. Maybe it's worries about school or for mommies and daddies, worries at work. Maybe it's not getting to travel to see friends or family this year. Joseph turned and wondered, what does this mean that Mary is going to have a baby and that this baby is going to be the son of God? And God sent the angel Gabriel to remind Joseph not to be afraid that Mary and Joseph were not on this journey alone, that God was with them on this journey. God sent Gabriel to remind Joseph not to be afraid, to remind Joseph of God's presence, that God was with him and her and all of them. And God gives us the ability to pray so that we can always remember God is with us, even when we toss and turn in our sleep. So let us pray this evening. Let's pray, Pastor Vern, for all the babies and parents and all the children of God that they might know the good news of Christ coming into the world. The good news of the presence of God that is always near. Pastor Vern, will you lead us in prayer? Good idea. Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for this night, this special night. We give you thanks for babies and parents for all children of God of all ages, we pray that this night you would give us joy and excitement as we hear the story of the birth of your son and as we share that good news in the world. We give you thanks, O oh God, for stars that twinkle at night that help guide people to Jesus, for your church and for gospel readers from their homes and on video. We give thanks for musicians and songwriters that help proclaim the birth, that help remind each and every one of us day and night, waking and sleeping, that God is with us. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the gift of rain that waters the earth, for the brightness of stars and planets, for signs of your creation, your beautiful creation around us. Help us to love and care for what you have made, just as you love and care for us. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all the many people around us that have shared in our life and shared by telling us the Christmas story throughout the years, who have given us gifts in recent days, who we wrap gifts for to give away, and who we remember this day for the gifts that they gave us long ago, as well as in thanksgiving for, the, for those individuals and those hands that wrap gifts that we will receive tonight or tomorrow or in the days ahead. We also give you thanks, God, for those who are visible signs of your love to us, for doctors and nurses, for first responders, policemen, firefighters, and paramedics, for teachers who help us learn in school, for all those who you give varying gifts to, to help show your love and to be signs of Jesus who has come into the world to be signs of Jesus to us. And for we offer our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And can you say with me, Amen. Amen. You know, knowing the presence and peace of God that is with us and that calms our restless nights, 
Why don't we sing the song Silent Night together? You know that song. Join in with me. as she walked to her cousin Elizabeth's house. She was excited to share the good news. Mary was going to have a baby and not just any baby, God's son, Jesus. Who's there? Marry your cousin. I'm already married to John and I'm not going to marry my cousin. Ha ha ha, come and marry my cousin. It's wonderful to see you. Wow, you're pregnant? Even though Elizabeth was much older than Mary, God had blessed her with a baby too. Elizabeth and Mary hugged, and then Elizabeth said, Yes, and I can see by the glow on your face that you are too. When I heard your voice, my baby jumped for joy inside of me. You are blessed because you heard God's words and believed. Mary was filled with joy. She took a deep breath and began to sing a song in praise to God. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and I sing my Savior's praise. You have looked upon our lowliness, and now we're filled with grace. Now every land and every age this blessing shall proclaim. Great wonders you have done for us, and holy is your name. Thank you, God. Amen. That was wonderful. Thank you, God. Amen. And what a wonderful song that was that Mary sang and proclaimed. We're going to hear it again in just a bit, I think. But let me mention about having a baby, first of all. Mary was so excited, and I can only remember about being excited and, and filled with expectation when Nina and I were expecting both Rachel and Robert, our children. We were both scared a bit as well as excited. And for me, I can only describe that whole process as being miraculous, a miracle, a miracle of God with us, a miracle that whole time while Nina was pregnant, a miracle the whole time when the babies were born, not at the same time, Rachel and Robert are a couple years apart, but still a miracle. And for me, a reminder of God's presence with us. Thanks be to God for babies and for children. I think about Mary and her wrote relative, Elizabeth, and perhaps having two babies in a family can be twice as miraculous as, or twice as exciting. Yeah. Pastor Vern? One thing I like to do when I'm excited is I like to sing. <laughs> Mary goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth, and she tells her that she's going to have a baby and that this baby is going to be the son of God. And then she learns when she gets to Elizabeth's house that Elizabeth is also expecting a baby. There was definitely a lot to be excited about in Mary and Elizabeth's lives. So while they were visiting together, Mary sang a song. Hey, didn't we hear that song this past Sunday in church? We in sure did, actually. It's a song that we know as the Magnificat. Can you at home say that with me? Magnificat. Magnificat. Awesome. Good job. Well, why don't we listen to Mary's Magnificat again?
rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. In those days, a decree went out for Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own hometowns to be registered. Mary and I packed quickly for Nazareth. We had to go to Bethlehem. Mary was worried if there would be a place for us to stay. But we were both excited because baby Jesus would be born soon. The little town of Bethlehem was crowded with people. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her baby. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for us in the inn. Pastor Vern, what's wrong? Don't you like your party hat? I love my party hat, but I've got a bigger problem here. Oh, what's wrong? It's Jesus' birthday, and I can't blow these candles out with this mask on. Oh, my <laughs> I'm sure that Mary and Joseph didn't expect that their baby Jesus would be born in a cold barn surrounded by animals either. There were problems when Jesus was born. We'll get through it. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Jesus was born in a place that was different than where his parents might have expected. The good news is, Jesus is good news. The good news is that Jesus, the Son of God, was born. God's love for all the world still came to us at Christmas. So we can celebrate with cake and candles and fruit punch, too. You're right, Pastor Dave. Even though Christmas may be happening in a way that we didn't expect this year the good news is that jesus still was born god's love was still born to us so why don't we sing happy birthday to jesus we've got a cake with candles here and everyone knows the song happy birthday so join me along and let's sing happy birthday to jesus happy birthday to you Woo! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Can we eat cake now? Yes. Yay. Cake. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord appeared before them. The glory of the Lord showed around us. And we was afraid. Don't be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy. Good news for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David. A Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of clothing lying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to the God in the highest, and on earth peace among the people. Pastor Dave, have you seen that house down the street from the church with all the Christmas lights in the trees? I have. It's It's magical. There are different colors and shapes. Some look like balls of light. There is a heart, even a cross, and they are really cool lights. Imagine what it must have looked like when the shepherds saw and heard hundreds upon hundreds of angels, multitudes singing in the sky about the birth of Jesus. Oh, they sang glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. You hey. know, I also wonder, since it was Christmas, if they may have sang Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle All the Way. Maybe, Pastor Vern, who knows? But just last night, I was trying to sing that song and ringing some bells, and one of our younger participants in our caroling, Sophia, 
I was ringing the bells and trying to sing jingle bells, and Sophia kept, kept saying, I want to sing about the angels. And then she sang, one little, or one little, two little, three little angels, four little, five little, six little angels, seven little, eight little, nine little angels, all holding baby Jesus. And she kept on going, and she was like, loving baby Jesus, caring for baby Jesus, watching for baby Jesus. She could just do that all night long, caring for baby Jesus. It was so precious. So whether it's bells, whether they jingle, or whether it's angels, it's a wonderful story to both tell and to sing about. Sure. You know, talking about angels singing about the birth of baby Jesus, that reminds me of another hymn that we sing in church. Angels we have heard on high. Maybe you know that song and you'd like to sing it along with us now. Then the angels left the shepherds and went back into heaven. Then the shepherds said to one another, The Savior Jesus is born? Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that they told us about and that the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. And they told Mary and Joseph everything. And they were amazed. Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Then we raced across the hill shouting the good news. Jesus is born! Jesus is born! Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you. Pastor Vern and Mandy, I'm not sure how you did that, but thank you. Speaking of going over the hills and telling the story, the other night in here, Cooper and Raylan Grebe were here and they were singing, Go Tell on the Mountain! and Caroline accompanied on flute, and it was beautiful, and so we captured them on video, and we'd like to show and share that song with you now. Thank you, Raylan and Cooper. Wasn't that wonderful, boys and girls? Go tell it on the mountain and go sing it on the mountain, even right here at St. Mark's. And you never know what's going to come out from behind a tree. Look out. What in the world? <laughs> Angels and shepherds and their flocks of sheep all celebrating and traveling to see Jesus after his birth. Wow. Not a bad birthday. If I may say so myself. Jesus' birthday celebration was such a big deal that there were folks who traveled for years and years and years afterwards to celebrate his birth. Looks like I have aloe sheep on my ear. <laughs> That's just bad, Pastor Vern. Uh, but they traveled all over the world. Go Tell on the Mountain went everywhere, including to Mexico. So, Pastor Vern, how do they say... Lease Nobby Dodd. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Pastor Dave, where do sheep get their hair cut? I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, not that I need one, but if I did, it would be at the Baba shop. <laughs> <laughs> this is really bad. Now you know why when Mary and Joseph were in Bethlehem and all the people in Bethlehem looked out and they saw the shepherds coming, you know why... Uh, <laughs> why they were so why they were so scared bad sheep jokes right pastor Vern, let me ask, have you been baptized i have been baptized thanks be to god and our favorite song when someone is baptized is amazing grace right speaking of which that leads us to the next part of the story take it away boys and girls 
Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where was the child born king of the Jews? We saw his star and came to give him gifts. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. So he called together all the chief priests and smartest people he could find and asked, Where is this Messiah who is to be born? In Bethlehem of Judea, because the prophet Micah said, Bethlehem, you are by no means least among Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then King Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star would appear. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go then and search for the child, and when you have found him, come and tell me, so that I too may go and worship him. There ahead of us was the star that stopped right above where the baby was born. And we were excited to feel joy. That joy. Way to go. Thank you. And telling the story of the wise men. Here's a bit of a commercial. This coming Sunday, we will hear the story of the wise men told in a, in a new and a different sort of way. So you do not want to miss that this coming Sunday at 10 o'clock. But for now, where do you think angels went to share the good news that Jesus was born? Maybe they went to Paris. Paris? Sure. You can be in Europe. How about, how about somewhere in South America like Brazil? McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's. How about Chick-fil-A? Oh, that's a good one, too. Maybe they came to Mooresville. Right here in Mooresville, for sure. Well, the good news certainly traveled far from west to east. Like the wise men, like the hats that Pastor Dave and I are wearing, they traveled far from the east. I wonder how the wise men traveled, though, to see the baby Jesus. They didn't have cars or trucks back then like we do now. I wonder, hmm, oh, I bet I know. I bet they flew on reindeer. <laughs> Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny okay, okay, nose. Okay, okay, Pastor Vern. Uh, good idea, but I'm pretty sure that these wise men rode camels. At least that's what are all in the pictures. They rode camels, and still they traveled a long way, a long, long way to visit and to adore Jesus. It reminds us of the hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful, about coming joyful and triumphant to adore, to celebrate Jesus like these wise men did. Let's sing, O Come All Ye Faithful. Follow the star. When the wise men arrived in Bethlehem, they went to the house. When the wise men saw baby Jesus, they kneeled down and gave him three gifts. They gave him gold as a symbol of kinship on earth. And frankincense as a symbol of how God had answered our prayers. And myrrh as a sign, and this is sad, a sign that one day he would suffer and die. And then the wise men left. And then the wise men gave him love. Show your love. Wise men left and went home by another road, not back to King Herod, because they had been warned in a dream not to go back to Jerusalem. Oh, 
a Christmas tree, presents. I love presents. <laughs> Boys and girls, I bet you have something, maybe several things that you are hoping to get as a present for Christmas. You know, it makes me think when I was little, one year I wanted a car, another year I wanted a fire truck, another year I wanted like a soccer ball or a football, then I got into wanting video games and board games, all these different things. And the wise men, the wise men brought Jesus gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Are that these strange things right here? I, I mean, we give gifts to one another too, but gold, frankincense, and myrrh? I guess the important thing, though, is that we remember the greatest gift that we give thanks for at Christmas. Would you say that's right, Pastor Dave? Thank you, Pastor Vern. What a wonderful reminder. Yeah, the greatest gift we give thanks for is Jesus. Jesus is the greatest gift. And by the way, thank you to the Martins, to Vivian and Charlie and Howard for participating in that video gospel and how you shared that gift in word and in deed and how you shared that love, the love of God, the love of Jesus. So it reminds me that Jesus is good news, that Jesus is love, that God is love, and that as we share, we receive, and as we receive, we get to share. And that's a wonderful gift this Christmas and every single day of the year. So thank you all, boys and girls. Thank you, parents. Thanks for joining us for worship this night as we celebrate Christmas in new ways and as we remember the story of the birth of Jesus from all of us. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of our hearts. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the birth of Jesus, for Jesus is good news. Thank you, God, for Christmas. Thank you, God, for families and friendships. And help us, God, to be mindful of those less fortunate, like a family of Joseph and Mary and a baby that had to be placed in a manger inside of a cattle stall of perhaps a barn because there was no room in the inn. Thank you for all the people around us like shepherds and angels and wise men. Be with us as we get ready to go rest tonight, as we sleep in heavenly peace, and as we await to celebrate again tomorrow the birthday of Jesus Christ, our King, who taught us all to pray. Our, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Pastor Vern, will you give us a, a closing benediction? Sure. And now, boys and girls of all ages, those young, those old, may the God who created you bless you. May the God who was born among us in Jesus Christ sustain you and give you hope. May the peace of of the Spirit of God surround you and keep you this day and every day. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Caroline, will you lead us in a closing postlude?